All right, and the me meeting is being recorded as well. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good morning uh, and welcome to our December Workforce Wednesday session. Uh, my name is Jessica O'Brien and I am the Workforce Strategy Consultant in Southeast Minnesota. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Our Workforce Strategy team works monthly to bring you relevant and up-to-date strategies for different workforce topics. And today's topic will highlight a few of the state services that are available to businesses that will help you attract, train, and retain your workforce. And so we're excited to hear from our panelists today who will share about some regional programs that can assist you with your workforce needs. And we'll go to the next slide. Our um, uh, workforce strategy consultant team works regionally across the state with businesses to help identify attraction and retention strategies and help facilitate connections with local, regional, and state workforce partners, um, some of which we'll be hearing from today. And so when you work with our team, you are automatically connected to a wide network of people and partners who work collaboratively together for the success of our state, our regions, and our communities so that your business and our workforce can thrive. And so our session today will go until noon. And then starting at noon, we will segue into our 30-minute unplugged portion of the event, uh, where we invite you to turn on your cameras, unmute yourself, um, or raise your hand in the chat if you'd like to ask questions um, to any of our panelists or our workforce strategy consultant team. And so to kick things off, I want to invite you to introduce yourself in the chat if you haven't already by telling us your name, your organization, and the geographic area you are joining us from today. Uh, we also invite you to add your questions in the chat throughout the session, and we'll try to um, either get to them during the session or afterward during our unplugged time together. And so as always, these webinars are recorded and available to view at any time uh, via Deed's YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook pages, as well as our careerforcemn.com website, where you will also find recordings and resources from previous sessions as well. And so without further ado, I will hand things over to my workforce strategy consultant colleague in central Minnesota, Della Ludwig. Thanks, Jess. Good morning, everyone. I'm Della Ludwig. I'm the workforce strategy consultant for central Minnesota. I'll be leading the discussion today on statewide services and support for your businesses. The meeting will highlight a few of the state services that are available to attract, train, and retain your employees. You will learn about your regional programs and personal contacts that can assist you with your workforce needs. Here's a brief look at our agenda today. If we can go to that slide, uh, which, can cons uh, which will consist of an overview of different programs to build and develop our talent pipeline as well as resources with the bulk of time being spent on our expert panelists. Uh, presenters include Liz Jennings from Employment Services at Career Force, Jane Kearns from uh, Veteran Employment Services, Marcy Jasper from Vocational Rehabilitation Services or VRS, Daisha Van Alstein at State Services for the Blind or SSB, and Gina Fortney at Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards, or MOB. We will then do a short panel discussion before doing a deep dive at 12 p.m. At 12 o'clock is when we stop the recording and we do the unplugged session for 30 minutes of question and answer directly from you, the participants. And we turn on the cameras and unmute yourself so we can do that in-depth conversation with all of the panelists. We'll also be sharing the resources and tools for you to strengthen your organization in the chat throughout the presentations. Today's recording and all resources will be shared after the session at careerforcemn.com slash workforce Wednesday. Next slide. So before we get started, we'll do a brief overview of the Career Force system. We're not going to spend a lot of time focusing on this inner dynamics of all of the departments, but wanted to show how these organizations are all working together to assist employers and job seekers with their workforce needs. 
Deeds Career Force Employment Services assists employers with finding and retaining workers, especially overlooked uh, labor pools. Recruiting activities such as job fairs and on-site hiring events. It administers uh, minnesotaworks.net and careerforcemn.com sites and provides job seeker training and assistance. Teams that fall within the employment services umbrella include job service, migrant and seasonal farm worker services, foreign labor program, and a variety of local and statewide programs and teams. The Minnesota Veterans Employment Program works to create enthusiasm among businesses for hiring veterans and advocating for those who have served in armed forces. Their program works to assist employers by providing quality veteran candidates and by conducting outreach to new and existing businesses to discuss their needs and determine how the Career Force Center, can, uh, Center services can be beneficial. Minnesota Vocational Rehab or Rehabil Rehabilitation Services assists individuals with disabilities uh, prepare for, find, and keep job and live as independently as possible. Vocational Rehab Services offers a wealth of expertise and experience to assist businesses with creative strategies to recruit and retain skilled workers with disabilities. Their talent pool ranges from entry level to experienced professionals. The state services for the blind vocational rehabilitation program provides services to individuals with significant vision loss and employers statewide to help workers obtain and retain jobs. Their mission is to fil facilitate the achievement of vocational and personal independence by Minnesotans who are blind, visually impaired, or deaf blind. And the Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards, or MOB, is also part of the Career Force system. It is the mission of the Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards to provide Minnesota with a skilled and competitive workforce through engaged and proactive local elected officials, workforce boards, and staff. These employer-led local workforce development boards are responsible for overseeing both federal and state-funded workforce development programming in their areas. They develop locally driven strategies and programming to meet the needs of employers and job seekers. Next. So now I'll take a minute and just introduce our panelists for today. First is Liz Jennings. I'm sorry, Liz Jennings. Um, she is an employer engagement specialist with DEED um, Career Force Division, and she works internally with staff and externally with employers to support talent matching efforts statewide. Liz focuses on connecting people, providing resources, and understanding what everyone needs to have. Um, a strong labor exchange system throughout Minnesota. Jane Kearns served three years in the United States Army and then went on to college on the GI Bill. Jane currently is um, a local veterans employment representative for the northern part of Minnesota. Next, we have Marcy Jasper. She is a business consultant with the Vocational Rehab or Rehabilitation Services, or VRS, and has been with, the, uh, been with them for over 19 years. Her passion for serving individuals with disabilities spans over 25 years. Marcy specializes in working with businesses to think creative, creatively, identify openings, and match them with the VRS talent pool. Daisha Van Alstein is a business service and employment program specialist with the Department of Employment and Economic Development State Service for the Blind Vocational Rehabilitation Program. Daisha specializes in engaging individuals with disabilities and employers uh, to provide meaningful employment and for underrepresented 
populations. Jaysha provides training, resources, and technical assistance for employers and individuals from across Minnesota. Next. Next, we have Gina Fortney. Um, she is the director for the Minnesota, Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards, uh, the state association that represents Minnesota's 16 local workforce boards. Gina has long, a long career in the workforce development, including leading career pathways programming for Washington, D.C.'s state workforce board, uh, working as a consultant for the U.S. Department of Labor, and managing youth and adult employment and training programs on a local level. Next. Now I'd like to turn it over to Liz Jennings, who will be our first panelist, and she is from Career Force Employment Services. Liz? Hi, thank you very much. Yes, I'm Liz Jennings, employer engagement. So I work for Deed within the Career Force system. And, you know, I, I just like to point out that Career Force is our entire statewide network of private, public, and nonprofit partners. We're all committed to both serving employers and serving individuals who are looking for their next opportunity. And being that talent mark matching um, entity, you know, I think, uh, well, I, I know Deed's mission of helping Minnesota thrive economically and continuing to build its world-class workforce always um, falls into what we do. Next. So career force, is statewide and as i said you know there are some privately run um, offices public and nonprofits. so what i mean by that is some of these offices are run by county services such as dakota county or anoka county some are run by uh, deed staff such as myself some are run by our nonprofit partners and gina will talk a little bit more about that just know i mean really the technical details don't matter to you the employer just know that we are all here to support you and there's going to be an office um, not that far from wherever you are in the state next so how do we support employers you know, we have those resources for finding and retaining workers. Um, we've got a lot of uh, tip sheets, documents that we're always creating, you know, workforce strategy consultants, our communication team, others put together, you know, what we know our employers are looking for. You know, we have those typical recruiting activities, job fairs, on-site hiring events, virtual job fairs. We hold education events internally, you know, for our, our workforce professional staff all over the state to say, hey, what's going on in this industry? How can our job counselors help our job seekers find and apply to these jobs, no matter what that industry is? Um, and then we have similar webinars and education events for job seekers. We have our labor exchange, you know, that software um, called Minnesota Works. Every state in the United States is funded by the uni U.S. Department of Labor to have a talent matching software. Minnesota Works is ours, and it feeds into the U.S. NLX, U.S. National Labor Exchange. And then we also provide all of those resources on tax credit, federal resources, regional wage data, whatever you need, you know that you can contact any one of us and be able to uh, access and, you know, get the information that you need. Next. So, you know, people often say, how do you partner with our career force system? And I think this goes for all of us. Um, and certainly this, you know, Gina Fortney's presentation also plays into this. You know, first you create a Minnesota Works account. You start accessing our online documents. You're posting your job events on our Career Force calendar, Career Fair calendar, which is 
public, statewide, no cost to you. Then you start to get engaged with some of our regional uh, offices. You stay in touch with all of us, letting us know what's going on in your hiring world. You start to attend things like Workforce Wednesday. And then we would really love to get you more advanced. Um, you know, develop a career pathway program, work with our workforce strategy consultants, work with the directors that Gina works with on um, their workforce development board, start by attending. Maybe eventually you'll be a board member yourself, participate things. So this is how we envision um, collaborating and partnering with you, the employer. And last slide. We have two ways getting in touch with me, of course, by my email, liz.jennings at state.mn.us and careerforce at state.mn.us. We have a Careerforce Information Assistance Line, which is a very strong, fantastic team of four people who cover both the labor exchange software, Minnesota Works, and anything for job seekers and employers. If you have a question, you can't remember where else to turn, turn to our career force information line and then they get you connected with whatever way you need to better serve you. So thanks. Excellent. Thanks so much, Liz. We are now going to go to Jane Kurtz and she's going to talk to us about veterans employment programs. Go ahead, Jane. Okay. Good morning. I'm Jane Kurtz and I'm going to talk about the veterans employment program. And okay, so our program is funded by the United States Department of Labor Jobs for Veterans State Grant. And some of our inject objectives include to provide individualized career services to eligible veterans in order for them to obtain and retain quality employment. And we also try to establish a strong business connection with employers to assist them in recruiting, hiring, and retaining veterans. Um, our staff includes Veteran Employment Specialists, or DVOPs. Okay, and um, they work individually with veterans experience significant barriers to employment, and also local veteran employment representatives, such as myself, who work with Minnesota businesses to promote the hiring of veterans. Next. Um, so the local veteran employment representatives have ad additional duties such as planning career fairs, um, doing employer outreach, um, conducting job searches and workshops at the career force. We also work to coordinate recruitment of veterans and we promote credentialing and licensing opportunities for veterans as well. Next. And some of our best practices include, um, we work to educate managers on the value of veteran employees. Um, we also try to improve the cultural competency of those who hire veterans, focusing on awareness of issues that are specific to the military community. Um, we, in addition, we allocate recruitment resources by tracking which job fairs and other recruitment tools are the most beneficial. We also encourage employers to take advantage of federal resources that allow companies to connect with veterans early in the transition process. Um, and we, we encourage employers to invest resources in onboarding, career development and retention and not just recruitment. And finally, we track veteran recruitment performance and retention metrics to gain a deeper understanding of which strategies are most effective and which offer the greatest return on investment. Next. Okay, so in closing, here's a map of all the local veteran employment representatives in the state. Um, it includes their, their contact information, their phone numbers, and their email addresses. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jane. With that, we are going to go ahead and turn it over to Marcy Jasper with Vocational Rehab Services and Deja Van Alstein with the State Services of the Blind. Marcy and Deja. 
Hi, so I'm Daisha Van Alstein with State Services for the Blind. Um, so first, vocational rehabilitation is um, present in every state and overseen by the Rehabilitation Services Agency under the Department of Education. So every state has one. Um, each state is required to, to have this program to assist individuals with disabilities in preparing for, obtaining, and maintaining competitive integrated employment. When this was established, states were given the choice. They could either have one agency that specialized in all disabilities, or they could split into two agencies, one that um, covered most disabilities, and then one that specialized in vision loss um, and deaf blindness. So Minnesota was one of the states that chose to have two agencies, but with this being nationally, uh, Marcy and I are part of a team of um, points of contacts for all the agencies. So companies that have a uh, multi-state footprint will often come to us and we can um, coordinate with other states and hand them over and or you know work together on programming great thank you Daisha. Um, i'm marcy jasper uh, vocational rehab service is an agency within the department of employment and economic development or deed if you've been hearing we assist businesses in connecting with qualified candidates our goal is to understand the business needs, create partnerships, and then help them tap into a great source of talent. We also provide consultation, information, data, and resources to employers that might help in making decisions about recruiting, hiring, and promoting employees with disabilities. VRS is a voluntary program, so people come to our agency because they want to work. The individuals we serve range from students in high school seeking entry-level work up to skilled, experienced professionals with advanced degrees. We assist individuals with all types of disabilities, including the deaf and hard of hearing. We have offices that are located throughout Minnesota. And SS SSB is the sister agency to VRS, so we provide um, very similar services. Um, in fact, we often work very closely together because between our two talent pools, we can offer a variety of talent. Um, we are also a voluntary program in which individuals come to us for assistance in joining or advancing in the workforce. Um, and then we also have a team of individuals that work directly with employers to help them meet their needs, provide technical assistance, um, whatever we can do to help bridge the gaps. Um, and then we, um, like I said, often work super closely with VRS because uh, our agencies, we fall under the same rules and we um, complement each other. Great, if you could go back one slide. Thank you. So helping businesses recruit qualified candidates is one of our primary areas that we partner with businesses. Um, what we love to do is with many businesses is come out and visit and take a tour and see what, you know, the positions you have available, see the work environment and then assist in how we can partner with you. We work with employers to set up tours, informational interviews and job shadows so individuals can learn more about your business and different career fields. A big push we have right now is, um, as we mentioned earlier, was those high school students and really getting high school students with disabilities out into the community, um, as we said, to, to tour places to really figure out their career path. BRS and SSB, we offer paid on the job work opportunities such as job tryouts, on the job training and internships so individuals can try a position or obtain some on the job skills um, and we have funding for that. We provide training on all disability related topics. We have a very general disability um, related training and then we can also dig down into each uh, disability specific and do a training to your organization or to your business. We can consult with you about your current employees with disabilities and retention strategies, accommodations, um, or anything that's needed with current employees. And we also work extensively, as I mentioned, with youth in high school to assist with career exploration and paid work experiences. And then um, while well, VRS, you know, they, they do accessibility check-ins um, and stuff, that's, that's a big focus of our agency though. Um, and so we can get, we have assistive technology um, 
staff that work very closely with businesses to check to see if their systems are accessible with either speech output or with uh, magnification and can work carefully with them to try to, you know, maybe there's some scripting that can happen or some bugs that can be fixed. Um, we can also go in and do a lot of um, uh, work around uh, recommending um, accommodations, providing that technical assistance. Um, and just to know, you know, these, if you connect with SSB and VRS, um, we are, we don't cost you anything. Our agencies don't, it's not a fee for our services. It is part of, part of deed. Great, next slide, please. So here are some some resources that we've come up with. There's obviously many more, but these are some of the main resources that uh, we will leave you with today. Um, the first one on there is bite-sized learning. So what we did was uh, VRS, State Services for the Blind, um, and then just uh, people within the community got together and developed little bite-sized learning. And they're an excellent resource for employers to support you in making your organization more welcoming for employees with disabilities. Currently on the careerforcemn.com site, there are five interactive modules. These are meant to be able to be watched at a team meeting or over a lunch hour. Um, they're anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, um, and there's they're on five different topics right now and more to come. Um, and then you can actually pause it, and we have questions on there uh, for you to kind of dig into, dig into it a little bit more with your employees. So that's the first one. Um, second one is ADA Minnesota. They It advances statewide awareness of and guidance of the Americans with Disabilities Act, and it offers one-to-one -one assistance either in person, online, or via telephone, and that is through the Metropolitan Center for Independent Living. Uh, as we talked about, we have state services for the, for the blind um, and vocational rehab services on there with their links. We have the STAR program, and the STAR program is a system of technology to achieve results. It's located within our Department of Administration, and they can provide low or no cost assistive technology to employees with disabilities to make it easier or possible for them to do their job. And then they can also help employees determine which technology will work best for them. That's the STAR program. And last but not least is the JAN, the Job Accommodation Network. It's the leading source of free, expert, and confidential guidance on workplace accommodations and disability employment issues. They have practice, practical solutions that benefit both the employer and the employee. They help people with disabilities enhance their employability and shows employers how to capitalize on the value and talent that people with disabilities add to the workplace. A couple of their recent activities include they have a workplace accommodation toolkit, just-in-time training modules, and then workplace accommodations, low cost and high impact. Um, excellent, excellent resource. Um, I mentioned Jan to everyone I talked to. Um, it's a, a wealth of information on there. So, next, Stacia. So, um, with VRS and SSB, um, this is the main um, context. Uh, just know that you don't need to memorize this. If there's one number and you pick it out, you're going to get any of us. Um, we're very um, closely connected. And even, even with um, the VETS program, there's oftentimes um, we will bring them into an employer um, or they'll bring us into an employer just because between our programs, you're going to get a huge um, variety of talent. And so uh, don't get stuck on the, I have to call this person, I have to call this person in this area. That is our job to connect you. So if you have um, a footprint all over the state, just pick one and you're going to get us all. But these are the main contacts. Oh, next slide, I think. Yeah. And then Thank here's you. our contact information. Excellent. Thank you both. That was very informational. Thanks again, Marcy and Daisha. Really appreciate it. And we'll be asking you a few questions in a couple of minutes, so stay tuned. And next we have Gina Fortney at the Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards. Gina? Thanks, Stella. <clears throat> um, Hi, I'm Gina Fortney. I'm the director of the Minnesota Association of Workforce Boards. So it's the membership association that represents uh, Minnesota's 16 local workforce boards. So the information I'm providing you today is actually the work of those local boards. Um, 
the the boards cross the whole state so that um, map that Liz showed you, I'm going to show you a little bit different version um, in a couple slides. But the great thing about us is that we cover 87 counties. Um, so regardless of where you are in the state, you can access our services. Um, the workforce boards are employer led, so at least 50% of the members of the boards are your local employers. Um, and that's really important because we want all the strategies um, to be employer led and informed by local businesses. Um, we provide a variety of services to both job seekers and businesses, um, but we try to keep the goal in mind is to meet business needs. Um, we convene um, many partners um, in each local area. So businesses, community-based organizations, school districts, um, training providers. Um, and so we're really this convener that brings together um, many partners uh, to develop workforce solutions and meet the needs of those employers uh, as well as career seekers. Uh, next slide. So as I said, we uh, offer um, services to both employers and career seekers. Um, and that now these services may differ across the state based on the priorities of your local board. Um, but I wanted to go over some of the, the common ones. Um, uh, so local boards offer hiring events. Um, those could be in-person hiring events or virtual events. Um, so if you're an employer looking um, to get involved in something like that, you should reach out to your local board and maybe a local employer of the day. So those career force locations that you saw on the map, um, sometimes we'll have an employer come in, um, we'll advertise that the certain employer is here, and then people can come in um, and meet with you um, and find out more about the jobs you have available. Um, incumbent worker training is something that happens um, in a couple different areas throughout the state. Um, so incumbent worker training is you can access funding um, where you can provide training to um, either new employees or current employees that will upgrade their skills. Um, and ideally, um, upgrade their skills is uh, is great for retaining um, employees, but also if you have the ability to promote them, then you provide more opportunities for entry level positions as well. Um, we do one on one consultations with employers looking at what are your hiring needs? What are you doing right now to attract talent? Um, look at your job descriptions um, and be able to provide you with information on maybe how to enhance what you're already doing. Um, if you are looking for employees and we are look have career seekers who are looking for work, um, we can try to connect you. So uh, refer people to you. Um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of partnerships going on. So we're involved in our local chambers and other community organizations. So we really have a good understanding of what uh, business needs are on the local level. Um, something that we've really been focusing on the last couple years are diversity, equity, and inclusion resources for employers. Um, we know it's really important, um, given the disparities in our state, to make sure that employment opportunities are open for everyone. And part of that is helping employers be inclusive employers. So a couple of regions around the state, um, for example, are operating the IWE program. And the IWE program um, works with businesses to help them be an inclusive employer. Um, and if you go through the process, you can get a certification, um, an IWE certification that you can um, promote your company that you're an inclusive employer. Um, we do a lot of different events. Um, so they may be industry focused events like, um, like manufacturing month, tech month, healthcare month to promote um, opportunities in those different industries. Um, also wanted to mention around youth programming. Um, we hear from employers that they really want to be able to connect with young people and inform them about the job opportunities in their industries. Um, you know, a young person's understanding of the construction industry or the manufacturing industry might not be what's actually, you know, happening right now. So it's great to be able to connect with young people and expose them to what the opportunities are. And so we do a lot of different activities with school districts, with community colleges uh, to be able to show them what those opportunities are, do hands on events. Um, career exploration. Um, so if you're interested in something like that, uh, getting in touch with your local board is a great idea. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so you'll see here, you saw uh, a, another version of this map. Um, 
these are the 16 local areas. There's 10 um, in greater Minnesota and six in the metro. Um, and they're uh, primarily based by counties, except the city of Duluth and the city of Minneapolis are their own boards. Um, if there, I do have a link to the contact information for each of the directors of each local board. I think maybe we can put that in the chat. Um, so you should definitely reach out to the local board um, director um, where your company is located um, and it lists the counties as well to know what counties each serves. Um, you'll see on here again, there's the about 50 career force locations across the state. So we're happy to meet you in person or provide services virtually as well. Um, and I'll provide my email um, as well in the chat. Um, you're welcome to reach out to me and I can put you in touch with the appropriate local board in your area. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Gina. I really appreciate it. Okay, hey, we can go to the next slide. Here are a few of the resources um, that you may find valuable for you to reference, including how to find um, your local career force team, um, add your businesses, um, local job fair uh, to the career force site, and resources on veterans employer guide uh, to hiring veterans, as well as the medallion program. Next. There is also uh, contact information for VRS and SSB, as well as the mob partner information that Gina had just spoke about. Dean also has a number of economic funded training grant programs available uh, through the Minnesota Job Skills uh, Partnership or MJSP, uh, which works with businesses, education institutions and nonprofit organizations to train or retain workers, expand work opportunities and keep high quality jobs within the state of Minnesota. And that link is there for you as well. And we also provide uh, provided the link to all of the career force partners and the email and phone number uh, in case you have any uh, questions for career force. Next. So at this time, what we will go ahead and do is um, we will um, have a conversation with the panelists and just um, ask a few questions to them and discuss with them you know how things are going and how you as employers can uh, be reaching out to them and um, developing and, and building that workforce so at first we're going to go ahead and start off with liz if you could um, tell us a client story or a success story with one of your um, regional employers um, that you have recently had, uh, that would be great if you want to share some of those successes. Sure, thank you. Um, one one event that just took place uh, last week was um, with Union Pacific Railroad and Career Force Bloomington. Union Pacific has been, well, uh, we hear about the railroads in the news quite a bit. Um, but the reality is they need workers. You know, they we rely on supply chain through railroads and they need employees to make that happen. So we've been talking, um, you know, at Asheva with the workforce strategy consultants had had a, a meeting earlier this summer where she brought in, you know, workforce professionals to learn more about it. And Union Pacific kept staying in touch with all of us, but what else could they do? Um, in this case, then they said, you know what, we want to come to the Twin Cities and have an all day information session and hiring event. You know, can you make that happen? So, um, you know, I met with them. They had contacts within nonprofits, our community based organizations, which, you know, are critical to this whole ecosystem of helping um, job seekers find employment. And we planned a time where Union Pacific Regional recruiters could come to Bloomington and uh, lead info sessions. Okay, it ended up to be an ongoing rotating info session all day and then on-site interviews and, you know, getting the job seekers in, introducing them to the recruiting. Um, short story is Union Pacific uh, employers were thrilled. 
You know, they they were connected with uh, um, so many more job seekers than they previously had been uh, connected with. And our staff was, you know, thrilled because we got more traffic in through our office and our nonprofits, the Redemption Project and Emerge in Minneapolis, you know, partnered with us and they were able to create some openings for some of their job seekers. I have to say, though, you know, what's really critical is everyone working together. You know, there's no one office or no one team person who can do something like this and make it a success. I mean, the employer was really doing a lot of work to, you know, behind the scenes. Um, our community-based organizations were doing a lot of um, promotion to their people. You know, we had our tasks within the career force system. So, you know, I think that's really an ideal case of how we partner with employers. You know, so anyway, that's my success story. Excellent. Thanks, Liz. So that's a really good point. You know, like, you know, what can the the businesses be doing or what key advice would you be giving those businesses to be successful? And and that leads to those client success stories. So um, with that, um, I'm going to turn it to to Jane. Jane, what kind of client success stories have you had with your veterans and and with the employers that you've worked with and what advice would you give that that employer that's not really sure where to start? <clears throat> okay, um, well, with the veterans program, I've had a lot of success working with like mining HR departments up, up here in northern Minnesota. And one of the key things is, is we keep in contact and it's it's just like a couple quick emails per month where they're constantly emailing all the positions that they have that are open um, to the vet reps and you know, such as myself. And then I, in addition, um, send those emails out to all the veterans and, and anybody who's connected to a veteran um, in some way, shape or form. And so we think, you know, the success comes from just casting a wide net of getting the, the word out there of what you're hiring for at, on a consistent basis. And, Excellent. Um, yeah. Excellent. You have anything else to add to that? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's about it. Great. Thanks, Thanks Jane. And Marcy and Deisha, how do, how do people start? You know, if they say, well, we're not really sure that we can do any of this vocational rehab or our positions really aren't related to vocational rehab. How would, how would you answer that question? Or how would you say, mm, that's not really true. Any position could, could be, you know, focused on that. Yep, I can start out with them. That's that's a great point, Della, is sometimes when people hear the word disabilities, as we all know, it's a stigma out there and people get nervous, they can't do a job or there's only certain jobs that they can do. And that isn't the that isn't the case. So one of the things we can do is first come out and talk to your business. Um, and I think first and foremost is start with the training just to get people all on the same page and really understanding what is a disability. Um, as soon as we do that training, people really start to realize that, you know, one in four people have a disability. And so before you know it, it's like, oh yeah, I have family members and friends and I have one myself. And so once they start realizing that instead of, um, you know, putting disability into a category, it really opens up a lot of doors for us. Um, so that that's what I would say is just coming out and, and starting with um, talking with you and starting out with a training and and kind of going from there seeing what you have available and there is times where we go out to businesses and they say why don't i don't have any jobs that people with disabilities can do and it's like no more than likely you already have some folks with disabilities on staff you just again we need to just broaden your vision of what a disability is um and then again once we do that then it just it kind of flows from there daisha anything to add actually I have a lot to add awesome <laughs> so um, one of the things that we see, well, first of all, people, if, you know, they they fear disability because they don't understand it, and especially when you start looking at the vision loss or the dual sensory loss, and our agency being, you know, named State Services for the Blind, people assume that, you know, oh, we, um, all of our um, our talent pool, they can't see. There's no vision, there's no, and that's actually not true. Um, and so, 
we do see a lot of individuals that are in the workplace, they're successful in their jobs, and they have developed age-related um, vision loss, because that can happen in your, you know, think about, you know, I went from my 30s to my 40s, and all of a sudden, my 40s, I have bifocals, right? It happens to like a lot of people. And then when you start getting into your 50s and your 60s, depending upon um, what type of age related vision loss you have, um, it can progress. And so, you know, you'll have workers that they were successful in their job, they were productive, they were, um, you know, doing everything they need to do. And then all of a sudden, they started slipping. They're um, maybe not as productive and um, they might not even know why, but um, that slight vision loss that progresses um, can actually really impact people. So we see a lot of individuals that um, were in the, there are in the workplace and they need um, assistance, accommodations, something in order to help them maintain that employment. And we all know that um, hiring someone is way more expensive than keeping a valuable employee. So being able to access VRS and SSB and to be able to keep those employees is crucial. Um, and sometimes when it comes to employers, they will just, um, they'll hear from someone who heard from someone um, about someone that hired someone with a disability and they'll reach out to SSB or VRS. And that just happened um, a couple weeks ago. So about, well, about a month and a half ago. So, you know, an HR person had this job that they have not been able to hire and they've been looking for six months. They couldn't find anybody. Um, someone had heard of us. They contacted our employment people. Our employment um, people looked at the job. Um, I had just the day before um, consulted on um, a case and I was like, this looks like this guy, this skills match. Sent to the, the um, employer, the person stuff, the person applied, the next day they had an interview, the day after that they had an in-person interview and a tour, and then they started two weeks ago. So, you know, it can, it can happen like that. Um, but, and it was because they had heard from someone else or something and then, you know, someone had hired someone with a disability. So, you know, it happens all kinds of different ways. That is awesome. And that's a great point, too. It could be an employee that you currently have and that they just need, you know, assistance to um, adjusting their position as well as hiring a new person that maybe has a disability. So very good point. Um, and Gina, what kind of key advice would you give a business that maybe hasn't heard of mob how would they how should they reach out to you and and again what what are some of those key features or or something that you would say that they're missing out on if they're not working with those regional um, mob partners yeah thanks um well i encourage you to email um the director of the board in your area and again that uh those emails and phone numbers are in the link that was um, sent a couple minutes ago, or you can email me and I'm happy to put you in touch. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that we can really help with is since we do work with so many businesses, we can give you some ideas um, based on what your needs are. You know, if it's if it's a retention um, challenge you're having or a talent attraction, we can give you a lot of ideas of what other businesses are doing successfully um, that we've seen. Um, you know, I, th I think right now employers just really need to be thinking out of the box and being creative and, um, uh, you know, learning from what other employers are doing on some of those creative ideas. Um, you know, right now with this tight labor market, um, we kind of need to uh, relook at everything we're doing, you know, relooking at your job descriptions, um, you know, can they be written in a way that is, um, you know, more inviting or more exciting or, um, you know, one thing that we've learned is it's really important to put salary information out there from the get go. Um, so you don't go through a whole hiring process with someone and then get offer them a salary and it doesn't meet their expectations and then you wasted all that time. Um, same thing around, you know, how flexible your jobs are. You know, people right now are really looking for, you know, something that maybe they can work from home a couple days a week. So if you have um, those flexible type of policies that will be enticing for people as well, but letting them know up front what expectations are. Um, also, I wanted to mention skills based hiring. So, um, you know, historically we have re required uh, bachelor's degrees for a lot of positions. 
Well, look at your job descriptions. Do they really need a bachelor's degree for the job you are advertising? Or are you looking for a certain set of skills um, that someone may possess, but maybe they don't have the four-year degree? Um, so kind of just re-looking at everything you're doing and the local board people um, are happy to help you with, with doing that. Wonderful. Thank you, Gina. I know there, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not working with my mob partners and, and really rely strongly on Career Solutions and CMJTS on the different projects that I'm working on uh, in central Minnesota. So it's a great partnership that we even with Indeed rely heavily on. So we truly appreciate that partnership as well as everybody else who's on the team today um, and all the conversations that we have. Um, on a continual basis, um, really connecting employers um, to these contacts and making sure that employers are aware of everything that these um, different resources offer um, and that they go out of their way to assist the employees uh, and employers um, with any type of resources and, and training that, that is available. So definitely make sure that you're you're reaching out and using these resources that we've given each of each of you um, and always follow up with us too with any questions that you have and we can make sure to direct you in the right right um, direction. So um, with that, I'm going to ask one more question and, and any of you can go ahead and answer and then we'll we're going to take a quick little pause and then go into the Q&A with um, all of our, our guests as well. So. So with that, how else do you uh, engage employers to be involved in your organization and and how do they strengthen their workforce pipeline? What are some ideas of how they can reach out to you? How do they engage with you? How do they then um, how does that then why is it worth it for them? And and how is it going to help them strengthen their workforce pipeline? I know um, Gina, you talked about incumbent worker training. You talked about on the job training. Um, Veteran Services has lots of different scholarships and funding available. Um, Career Force has some training available internally. Um, same with Bulk Rehab and, and State Services of the, uh, of the Blind as well. So um, why don't you guys just dig in a little bit deeper on that and, and give us some little tidbits of why it's so critical for employers to have, have you guys on their speed dial. Um, and we'll go ahead and start out with uh, Daisha. Why don't you kick us off? With um, as tight as the labor market is out there, um, it, businesses are becoming more and more um, aware of their um, their need to be uh, more open to hiring individuals from underrepresented pop, uh, populations. You know, one of the things when it comes to um, being inclusive in your hiring too, is that, um, you know, disability does not um, discriminate. Disability is every population. Um, disability um, affects, like Marcy had said, you know, a quarter of your workforce already, whether you um, know it or not, whether it's a hidden disability or not. Um, even if it is um, for hiring new employees or if it's retaining the employees you have or getting a better understanding of how to be um, more inclusive in your work in um, your hiring strategies, your um, uh, job descriptions, all of that, you know, our agencies can can help you with that. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Jane? Thank you for that, um, Daisha. And we'll go ahead and ask Jane a question on that as well. What would you say that they should be doing? Um, <clears throat> employers can connect with the veterans um, with with certain programs that they become can become involved with. One is the Higher Vet Vets Medallion Program, and um, all you need to do is just Google Higher Vets Medallion Program, and there's a procedure for employers to follow. There is a small fee, but the, but the employer itself gets a, either a gold medallion or a platinum medallion, depending on how many veterans they hire. And they can post that on their website. And, and that shows um, for veterans who are looking at websites that, you know, this employer is veteran friendly and supports veterans. Um, we also have another program for businesses called um, 
the yellow rib yellow ribbon employer program. And this is um, it's kind of more for larger businesses because there's a, a 16 um, step process to become a yellow ribbon employer um, along with, you know, you have to set up a steering committee and um, and a lot of extra work for HR, but well worth it. And um, th those employers then they support veterans who are still in the Army National Guard or are still serving in some capacity in the reserves possibly and it's just a really great program to support the veterans in the community. Excellent. And we have maybe one more minute. We'll go ahead and Liz and Gina, if you have maybe like a couple couple word answer to that, um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you quick, Liz, and then Gina. Don't forget to include new Americans in your recruiting strategy. Indeed has an Office of Immigrant and Refugee Services. We can connect you and, um, you know, think about that too with recruiting. Excellent. And Gina, any last words before we go to the unplugged version? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I'm sure if, like this is the first time you're hearing some of this information it may sound confusing all these different programs really there's no wrong door um, we all work together we're all partners so anyone you reach out to someone will respond and can get you in the right place so please don't feel overwhelmed by all the information um, we really all work very closely together and we'll definitely get you the right resources that you need Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We are going to go ahead and um, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Shayla before we go to our unplugged, where our um, guests can go ahead and ask questions to all of our panelists. So, Shayla, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Della. So, I wanted to invite everybody to register for um, next month's Workforce Wednesday. That registration is live. I'm going to go ahead and pop that in the chat. So next month, we're actually, we would like you to join us for State of the Workforce, where we can still make an impact in our current labor market. Um, so we'd like for you to join us um, for an engaging discussion from 11 to 12, same as this time with a unplugged from 12 to 1230. Um, we're going to be discussing where we can still make an impact in our tight labor market. So we're going to be discussing um, with another panel um, and subject matter experts where we will revert, review our current labor market data and discuss how employers can support retention and inclusion efforts, promoting equitable access um, with our current labor pools to lead to positive um, organizational impact. So I really hope that you guys join us for that. And again, this session is going to be um, recorded as well as our other sessions that have been done in the past. Those will be in our archive on the Workforce Wednesday site. Um, we would also like for you to complete the um, Workforce Wednesday survey. Um, we would love to have your feedback on that. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in the chat as well. And then as a quick reminder, if anyone did need assistance or was confused about posting jobs on minnesotaworks.net or anything like that, there is the career force assistance line. And then we do have our information here for grants and resources. And then we're gonna turn it over here to James here in a second. We'll give everyone a break. And we're going to move over to our unplugged session um, where you'll be able to turn on your cameras, unmute yourself, and ask questions directly to our presenters. Great. Thanks, everybody. We'll take a quick uh, one minute break and then we will come back with um, everybody's videos on.